What's going on, guys? It's a, a Monday evening. Get my prep work done for a junk removal made simple. Oh, blocking you out here for a junk removal made simple episode that I'll get ready to record, get put out uh, later this evening. While I was doing this, I got to thinking about something that I've touched on before, and um, uh, that's that, that's team members. Um, they, uh, it's amazing how selfish people are. And some people, some of my team members watch this, you know, maybe, maybe they, uh, some will be like, what do you, what, you know, what do you mean how selfish people are? You know, where are you, how are, what position are you in to talk about how selfish pe people are? I mean, cause you're, you know, you're using our labor to, uh, to, to make a bunch of money. And, um, they, they look at it like they're the ones doing all the hard work that, you know, that maybe some, some of them look at it like they're being underpaid. Not all of them. I, I got some really good guys that work for us, but I mean, there are a few right there that would probably have that opinion. They think, you know, when we started selling items, um, they, you know, the, uh, he's just reaching out there for more money, but I mean, they don't understand. We got, you know, we got a, we got a $30,000 payroll. We got to meet every week. We got, we got bank loans that are due on different stuff. You know, we might have some, we might, you know, we, we had a customer that owed us, Eighteen, nineteen, twenty thousand dollars. We had a couple of them. I mean, all told, we had some receivables that were close to just shy of forty grand, and uh, just people paying slow through the the slow season. So I mean, we were a little nervous through part of not nervous. We knew we were gonna make it through, and we we encountered some of those issues before, but we'd really had a massive round of expansion. We didn't have a whole lot of reserves on cash, which isn't a bad thing. It keeps you uh, that ke whenever you're nervous with with cash, you work harder. And you work smarter, and when you got a little bit of desperation, that's a good thing. So even as we grow, you know, as we grow this company to millions and millions of dollars, as we grow JRA to to millions and millions of dollars, and we got a huge expansion plan for that too. Um, I'm not going to elaborate now, but um, as that expands to big, larger, larger things, we're going to keep that money busy. We're going to keep that money flowing out into investments, into expansion. It's going to keep us desperate. And uh, when when you, when you're desperate, anybody that's been desperate. Um, you know, uh, uh, a lot, 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 a lot of times sports. Look at sports teams. March Madness was just over, and and I don't have an example from this year because I've gotten where I don't watch a whole lot of sports now. I follow NC State basketball once they were out, and then that was about it. Um, but a sports team that's desperate, a desperate team, a team that has to win a game in order to make the playoffs or has to win a game to make the NCAA tournament, they're they're going to play just to probably play a bit harder, and and they're going to be a little tougher to beat. Uh, they're going to have a little bit more. Uh, emotion into that and uh and that's tough uh, or you know that's that's tough to be keep keep that money flowing out into investments into expansion on your business uh it'll keep you a little desperate it'll keep you a little uneasy when you get when you get content get easy that's when you screw up that's when you spend money on crap that doesn't make you money that's when you go out and you buy a, a boat maybe you probably shouldn't have i'm not against you buying a boat but you know is that really where your money's best spent at that point Go buy a boat when you're making so much daggone money that you know you're you're investing as much as you possibly can in your business. You got money left over to buy a boat. At that point, you can go buy a boat. But um, you know, until then, or or an air airplane. Well, I use my the plane I have. I use for use for business. Um. So uh, you know, and then the 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 cub and all is is partnered with somebody else. So, but anyway, um, back to what I was talking about about before they uh. We had a team member. Team, we're we're, uh, we're going to be developing an app, and I can't give a whole lot of details as to what it's going to be about. But it's it's basically it's going to make running a junk removal business um, uh, much much simpler. We we've got scheduling softwares, uh, software. We've developed a few of our own internal apps for checklist. Um, I can't elaborate too much on it, but basically it's going to make you scheduling jobs both online in multi locations. Um, in, uh, uh, it's going to make, making sure you guys are doing everything they're supposed to do and it's going to work well on the phone. See right now there's a couple different apps out there that, that are as good as we're going to make this app, uh, at one thing, but this app's going to be good at several things. It's going to be everything you need to run a successful junk removal business. This app's going to have, it's going to be, if you're in a junk removal co company, it's going to be a must have product as soon as it comes, as comes out. Um, very, you know, most, most software developers, they, they are software developers. They're not business owners. And uh, I'm coming at it from a business background. I know what we need. 
I know what we need as junk removal business owners. I know what we need, and that's what that app's going to have. It's going to be a must-have. Well, this particular team member was going to be involved on that app. Um, we'd hoped to be starting in about March of this year. But I told him, I said, I said, listen, that may or may not work out. It might not work out. So um, as far as the start date, we're going to do this app, and we'll have you involved in it. Um, he wasn't going to run it. He wasn't going to be the, the lead guy. You know, we've got a we've got a strong team behind us with great experience on our software and our web end and our app development end. But I was going to involve him because he has done some simple apps for us, some simple checklist apps. He does a good job. Very passionate guy. Um, he would have done great. But calls me up today and tells me he's he's on a junk removal team. Calls me up today and he tells me that he's quitting. I said, uh, I said, okay, Ben, I, yeah, I understand. I, all I need is if you just email me over. I, I knew at this point, the way he said it, I knew he won't give me a two weeks. But I said, uh, I said, okay, here's what I need. I need you to send me a, a, a two weeks notice written. Give me a two weeks notice. And, uh, and, and that'll work fine. I understand. You know, I understand that you want to be doing more on the IT end. We don't have that quite yet right now for you. Um, you know, so that's, that's you know, uh, no, no problem. You know, what, what, I didn't tell him exactly this. Um, uh, but this is what, had he told me he was giving me a two weeks, this was my thought process, had he give me a two weeks, we'd brought him on back for that. Because I understand he wants to be on the IT end of thing. He doesn't want to be on the um, the truck so much. So, uh, but anyway, he said, well, that, that's the thing. I've already said another job. And, uh, you know, it used to be I might not say anything, but I said, said something this time. I said, well, you know, there's something to be said with holding up your end of the deal. And the end of the deal with junk doctors is after your first two weeks, you're supposed to give us, uh, the, we do a two-week probationary period. After two weeks, you're supposed to give us uh, give us a two-week notice. And there's also something to say about not burning bridges, especially when you are certainly aware of this huge opportunity we've got uh, coming up. But I kind of told him, I said, I said, I'm glad I found out now that, you know, that you're not an ethical, you know, not an ethical person. Uh, you're very selfish um, and you don't, you don't look at the big picture. And um, I'd rather find that out now than after we've developed this app and then we're having to deal with you at that point. So it all worked out. Um, I, I wish he wasn't that way, but, but I'm glad to find out he was that way beforehand. We're a little short staffed right now, and and he probably and he knew that I'm sure he knew we were short staffed right now, and uh, didn't care, you know. And, and we do a lot. We loan we loan we'll occasionally loan team members money, um, you know, if they need a day off, late notice. I mean, we'll go out of our way. We might spend fifteen or twenty minutes um, or more trying to find somebody to cover their shift and coordinate something. We might even look at our schedules or something we can do on our schedule to coordinate. Try and get this guy off so he can go do whatever he wants to do. But they forget about those favors that you give them. So if you want to give them some favors from a just because you think that's going to help out their performance or something, then, then go for that. But in, unless it's a particularly loyal guy, like we've got, uh, two, three, we've got maybe three, you know, we have. We should have be closer to 33, 34 people now. We have like 28, so we are short-staffed. But of the 28 guys we've got on our trucks over three locations, I'd say there's three – or actually, total total uh, team members. We're about 30 total team members. Uh, Captain me, Christian, uh, Kirsten, on the junk doctor's end, not on J.R.A., but on the junk doctor's end. And of those, there's, there's probably four, three or four I consider really, truly loyal team members that doesn't mean if it, they turn around and stab me in the back it's not going to surprise me i don't think they will um but uh you know there's little little guys are hard to come by so but where i was getting is if, you, if it's one of those three or four people you think are really loyal then uh you know chances are they're not really going to ask you for a whole lot of stuff because they're dedicated they're hard workers they're not going to ask you a whole lot and the times they do ask you do your very best to accommodate it because these guys have earned it but everybody else, when it's obvious, it's just about them. They're just doing the job because it's a job. Uh, they don't have a, they don't have a lot of pride in the work they do. Um, you got to know those guys. They're out for themselves, and and don't go out of your way. Don't waste a lot of time doing favors for them, because they certainly, as soon as they as soon as they see the grass, you know, a little bit greener on the other side, then they're gonna be jumping ship. Um, and that's just the type of business we're in. 
but even then, it's not even just this business. I mean, that, this is a problem. I, I got friends that are part of the corporate world. And it's a problem, you know, they're, they're man, managers up in the, in the corporate world, and it's a problem they're having. I got friends that are, you know, a lot of the guys we have working for us, it's a temporary job, or I guess all jobs are really temporary, but um, uh, nowadays anyway, you know, who, who stays with the company for a long period of time? But, um, you know, IT jobs, stuff like that, you know, uh, higher paying jobs. Um, some people look at this job mobile job as like an interim job. It's, it's something they do in between. You know, majority of our guys are part-time. They're not, on, they're not getting health benefits. Uh, they get paid a decently hourly wage, but, I mean, it's not a tremendous amount. So, um, you know, it, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, they look at it as an interim job. But, I mean, I'm talking with people in the corporate world that it's like a career-type job almost. It's the same thing. You know, as soon as the grass is greener on the other side, they jump ship and they just leave the companies hanging. And sometimes they won't even turn in two weeks. Even in a big-paying job, won't even turn in two weeks. They just jump ship. So, anyway... Don't let stuff like that surprise you. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it bother you because it's easy to say, what did I do? You know, I, I, I looked after this guy. I did this, this, and this for him. If you help him out, just look at it. Well, hopefully it'll help out his performance. Don't look at the fact that you're giving, you're doing them a favor. And uh, that's really unfortunate, but that's the way it is. That's the way it goes, um, just uh, being an employer. So don't take it personal. And... Uh, um, you know, just don't feel like you gotta you gotta do all these favors for these guys. Pay them a fair wage. Uh, if you can find a program that maybe selling items and all to get them more involved, where they can earn extra money from selling items. Like I, we've got a unique idea on how we're how we're gonna try and really get these guys enthused on bringing us more and more items that we can actually be sold, so we can increase that income. Because I know there's a lot of stuff they're not bringing us. So I'll cover that. I'm hopeful that it will get them more involved in the business as a whole where their effort can actually mean they, in addition to helping the company out, earn more money, that they themselves can earn more money. So I will talk on that, and maybe we'll have great success with that. But six years of operating this way, I've gotten pretty, I've gotten where nothing really surprises me when it comes to uh, team members. I used to take it personal, but I certainly don't now. Uh, if you're, if you're going to take this stuff personal, it's going to cause a, lot, a big strain in your life, big strain on your business, big strain in your relationship, and you just can't. You just got to accept it as is and just and find a solution find a fix. Um, sometimes what you'll do is you'll, is you'll stay a little short staffed almost to try and get, get your guys hours. Don't do that. Don't do that. Bring people in. They might make, have a few less hours, but bring people in. Yeah. Occasionally, very seldom do I ever lose anybody because of too little hours. It's like hardly ever happened. Um, you know, people say they want more hours, more hours, more hours. I've lost far more people from being burnt out than from, uh, not getting enough hours. And, and these are the same guys that are like, uh, they're, they're saying, uh, give me more hours, give me more hours, give me more hours. All right, so I give them a bunch of hours, and then it gets hot, they have a few tough jobs, and they quit. They get burnt out. So hire enough people where you're not relying if you lose one or two at once that you can still make it through. And uh, don't take stuff too much too personal. Uh, be a good guy, but but don't feel like you have to go out of your way. Listen, uh, we've got a Jug Move made a simple episode coming right up. Um, getting ready to get recorded. It'll take you probably, it won't post till probably 2, 3 a.m. this morning. Uh, it takes a while for that to get uploaded, and I still got to edit it afterwards. It's on business expansion, getting your business, blowing your business up. When should you do it? When should you expand? You should always be expanding, but when should you expand either geographically or uh, or adding additional services, and how do you go about doing it? That's going to be covered in this uh, JRMS ep episode coming right up, and uh, we uh, looking for, hope, hope you find it very helpful. Always, you can email me, Lee, at JunkRemovalAuthority.com. Check us out at JunkRemovalAuthority.com as well. Talk to everybody soon.